This lesson is over lines and angles. Uh, the objective, there's kind of two of them today. Identify parallel lines, skew lines, and parallel planes in three-dimensional figures, and identify the angles formed when two lines are cut by a transversal. Um, I will say those two lines usually are parallel for our purposes, but they don't necessarily have to be. So here's the definitions of, from that first objective. Parallel lines are coplanar lines that do not intersect. Um, this two uh, little line symbol means parallel to. Honestly, I do those a lot where they're slanted. Because um, again, I know if my handwriting, I'm going to think those look like L's or 11. So I put them slanted. You can do whichever way you want. The key with parallel lines is they're coplanar, which means they're on the same plane. Um, that's the specific definition, but the way I like to put it is I like to say they're the same direction. And it's pretty easy with coplanar. It's pretty easy to look at like um, A, E, and B, F. Those are parallel. Those are in the same plane. They're kind of on the front of that box. Um, or B, F, and C, G are kind of on the side of that box. But the confusing one is if you look at A, E, I think the confusing one, A, E, and C, G, um, those don't, the plane, those are both in the same plane. That's what coplanar means, they're in the same plane. Um, but that plane that they're in isn't necessarily drawn on here, so I think it's a little bit more confusing. So that's why instead of saying coplanar, I say that they're in the same direction. Um, so they're both going up and down, so they are parallel. So the next one is skew lines. So when you guys learn parallel lines, you learn that lines that never intersect each other, but that is in two dimensions. In three dimensions, you also have skew lines. Skew lines are the same as parallel, but they are not coplanar. So they never intercept, never intersect, sorry, um, but they are not in the same plane. Um, so an example of that is AB and CG. So AB is right here and CG is in the back. And you can kind of see where um, they are not going in the same direction, but they'll never intersect. They'll pass each other, but they'll never intersect. Um, and again, they're not going in the same direction. Um, then the last one, pretty self-explanatory, uh, parallel planes. Um, parallel planes, A, B, C, D. So that is this top part. And E, F, G, H is the bottom one. Um, and there's two other pairs in there that are parallel planes. Make sure with planes, you either put the word plane or put the little plane symbol. Um, a lot of people miss that in the chapter one test because they forgot that. Um, last but not least, this little part, use arrows to show that they are parallel to each other. Um, what that means is kind of like we used to use tick marks to show things were, congr uh, things were congruent or um, segments were congruent. To show things are parallel, so A, E, and B, F, um, we put a little, one of these little arrows, and then A, D, and B, C, since that's a different one, we have two arrows, and then you have three and four, and I think maybe those are on there, you can't really see them. So the two arrows are parallel to the two arrows, and the one arrow is par parallel to the one arrow. You can obviously do one arrow over here and one arrow on the back one, because they're all four parallel, same thing with the double arrows. All right, let's move on. So identify the following pictures with your new, uh, three new vocab words. This shouldn't be too bad. This is skew lines. These are parallel. Now make sure you say parallel lines. Technically, I should have lines with skew as well, but there's no skew planes. So if you just put skew, I know what you're talking about. But if you just put parallel, how do I know if it's a plane or if it is a line? So in the figure, assume the lines that, uh, and planes that appear to be parallel are parallel. Um, what that actually means is a lot of times when you do problems, they tell you don't assume things are parallel unless they tell you. Um, so if they told you everything that was parallel, it would take a lot of room. It would start getting messy. And so they just say the statement that just assume that everything that looks like it's parallel is indeed parallel. So which segments are parallel to AB? I'm going to try to list all of them. So AB is this one. Um, so we have CD would be parallel, we have GH would be parallel, we have FE would be parallel, and I 
think that is it. So the next one, and I maybe missed one. I don't think I did, but I'm eventually sometime on these notes, I will miss one. So just making sure I say the disclaimer. Number two, which segments are skewed to CD? So CD is this line for that segment. So which segments are skewed to that? So they are, uh, they don't intersect, but they're not in the same direction. Um, so one of them would be AE. Again, one of them's pointing up and down and the other one's not. Um, that means BF would also be. But are there any other ones? And the answer is, yeah, there's a couple more. We have EH. Again, those don't point in the same direction and they don't intersect. And FG. And a lot of people then try to say this um, FE right here, but that doesn't work because that's parallel to it. Those are going in the same direction. Um, and then another one a lot of people say is this DH right here or CG. Um, again, those aren't because they actually intersect that CD. So those are the four skew lines. What are the two pairs of parallel planes? Or sorry, what are two pairs? I'm actually going to list all three of them. So if you look at this, it kind of depends on how you look at it, but I think I call this the top. So the top and the bottom here. Now when you label these, it doesn't matter if you use all four points or if you use three. Remember earlier to label a plane, you really only need three. I like to use all four because it's a good habit to get into. And also, not only do I use all four, um, it doesn't matter, so if I'm looking at the top, the A, B, C, D, it doesn't matter which letter you pick first, so let's just do, just for example, let's pick D, and then it doesn't matter if you go counterclockwise or clockwise, but then you have to pick which way and go in order. So you could do D, C, B, A, or you could do D, A, B, C, doesn't matter. That's parallel to the plane. Now again, you don't have to do this next thing I'm going to show you, but when I do this, I like to pair things up. So D... I pair up with H because they're in the same spot. They're kind of corresponding a little bit. And then the C is corresponding with G. And then B is with S and A is with E. Now, again, you don't have to do it that way. You only need to use three letters, and it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Um, but it's a good idea to get in the habit of that because later on when we do quadrilaterals and when we do triangles, the order does matter for that. So it's a good habit to get into. So I'm going to try to do that this whole time. So those are two parallel planes. What are some other ones? Um, we could do this, I think, looks like it's the front, but this one and this one back here. So we have plane, let's do A, E, H, D is parallel to the plane. Um, so I'm going to do B, F, G, C again. You don't have to have it in that exact order, but I'm going to keep doing that because I think it's helpful. And last but not least, for the planes, again, you only need two for this one, but just to give you all the options. Again, I think it looks like the left and right side, but you might think differently. Um, and don't forget your little plane symbol. And if you're not good at drawing that plane symbol, if you just draw a box, that's fine. I'm not going to be nitpicky with that, but you do need some sort of label with that, either the word or the symbol. So let's do A, B, F, E is parallel to plane D, C, G, H. And this last one's a little bit different. Um, it says, what are two segments parallel to plane B, C, G, F? So B, C, G, F. What are what are two segments that are parallel to that? So um, a segment that's parallel to a plane, it's the same thing. They don't intersect. So AE doesn't intersect. DH doesn't intersect. And I think those are the only ones. Nope. Not the only ones. And EH also doesn't intersect. So AE, DH. 
And I know it says two, but just to give you the extra one, EH also does not intersect that plane back there. All the other segments will intersect that. One of the hardest parts about this is make sure you're labeling. Make sure the segments, you put the little line above them. Make sure the planes, you put the little plane symbol. Make sure you remember that. So these will go really quick. Name a, par uh, name a line parallel to. Um, I'm just going to go really quick with these. Um, and I guess technically this is saying lines, and these uh, are labeled a little bit more like segments. But we're going to assume that they go on forever just for this example. And your answers might be different than mine because I'm just going to go through and give one example of each of these. Um, so BC, I'm going to say, is parallel to EF. Now, again, I know that those are actually more like segments, but since they said lines and these are labeled as lines, I'm going to label them like that. FC, I have a couple different options, but I'm going to do EB. And DF and AC. Name a couple lines skew to BC, so BC would be AD would be a good one. Um, FC, oh, I would say AB for that one. So FC, we have AB. And then DF, I'm going to see EB. E Now, again, I went in more detail on this slide, so hopefully that all makes sense to you. I went a little bit quicker, and I only gave one example, and I didn't really draw the picture a lot, but I think um, if you're questioning these, go back and look at this slide. Rewind the video and watch me uh, explain some of those, and I think that'll help. Then we have another one named Parallel Lines 2. Um, and again, these are all listed more as segments in the picture, but since it says lines and these are listed as lines, I'm going to stick to that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of them you can list, but BC is parallel to ED is one of them. GH is parallel to EB. And HC is parallel to AB. And skew lines, BC, I'm going to say is GH. Uh, so GH, you could put BC. Obviously, again, they're skewed to each other because what we listed here. And HC is FA. And again, there's several different options for all of these. I just gave one of them. So the next one we're going to talk about is those um, relationships where we have a transversal. Um, when you have two lines with a transversal, the transversal is the one that intersects twice, intersects the other two lines. So occasionally you'll see where they do it like this on your paper, and some people get confused what the transversal is. The transversal intersects both of the other lines. Now, for our purposes, most of the time they're going to be parallel, not all the time, but most of the time they will be. So before we get to this vocab on this page, I want to make sure all these um, vocab words are actually, um, that are describing what they actually represent, so it's not like named after anybody or anything confusing, but we have to make sure we know a couple things before. In between the two lines is the, sorry, is the interior, outside is the exterior, and when they talk about the same side or alternate sides, they're talking about of the transversal. So if two angles are on the same side, they're either both on the left or on the right. And if they're alternate, they're on opposite sides. So now if you know that, then if you go to the alternate interior, so that's what they are. We have eight angles over here. Alternate interior means they're on the inside here. And they're on alternate sides of this transversal. So three and six would be a good example. Angle three and angle six. Um, angle 5 and 4 would also work. The next one, same side interior. So we're still dealing with the inside in between those lines on the same side of the transversal. So now 3 and angle 5 work. Um, and 4 and 6. Angle 4 and angle 6.
alternate exterior. So now we're talking about the outside here. So alternate exterior would be like 1 and angle 8 and angle 2 and angle 7. And corresponding angles. Now corresponding angles are a little bit different than the other ones. Um, when I say they correspond, they're in the same relative position. And so like this angle 2 right here is in the, the top of the line on the right hand side. So angle 6 corresponds with that. That's on the top right. So angle 2 and angle 6. So some other pairs with this one. We have 4 and 8. Those are both on the bottom right. Um, we have angle 1 and angle 5 are both the top left. And we have angle 3 and angle 7. Those are on the bottom left. Um, I used to tell students that you can kind of put a box around each of these and then you can think of that, the top right, top right, bottom right, bottom right, so on and so forth. Um, but that's what corresponding means. Um, so we have the first three goes with the box, the other four go with the two lines. And again, look, these lines are not parallel, but that's okay. We'll deal with parallel lines a little bit later. They don't have to be parallel. They just usually are for our purposes. So name one pair of each of the segments, planes, or angles. Um, lines and planes that appear to be parallel are parallel. So number one, parallel segments, um, EA and... HD. Again, several different options, but that's the pair I'm going to list. Now, notice they say segments, not lines, and so that's why those are segments. Skew segments. Let's just stick with EA, and then a skew segment would be DC. Parallel planes. Um, I'm going to say the top, E, F, G, D. Oh, sorry, H. That H is kind of in the middle, and it's hard to tell where that goes with. That is parallel to the plane A, B, C, D. And moving on to the transversal, alternate interior. Six and eight would be a good pair. Angle eight and angle six. They're on the in inside of the lines on alternate sides of the transversal. Same side interior, angle eight and angle three. Corresponding, let's do angle one and angle three. Again, several different options for all these. And last but not least, alternate exterior, let's do angle one and angle four. Again, very many options for those. Last but not least, now they do the opposite. They give you the angles. They want to know what type of angles they are. Um, so nine and 11, they're on the interior and they're on opposite sides. So alternate interior, you can abbreviate it down to alt int. Six and 10, six and 10, those are corresponding. Eight and 11, those are same side interior. And 7 and 13, so we have 7 here and 13 here. Those are alternate exterior, alternate exterior. So if you have any questions over that, make sure you're emailing, make sure you're letting us know.